Guys, I'm back. Uh, thought I'd do another vid showing some severely violent space weather here. What the heck was that? Back and forth on the uh, bow shock, and it actually ended up over here at one point. <clears throat> so you can see we still have the black and the purple, <clears throat> which is definitely anomalous. And just started on June 1st. I've seen uh, some people do vids on it. And uh, they seem to think it's has to do with low energy. But if you look at these Fock radiation belts, this one's at the low energy electron, lowest level. And this is at the highest energy electron, highest level. Just to give you some perspective, and you can see we got a whole lot of electrons bleeding in. This is the geosynchronous orbit of the satellites, which is around 22,000 miles. You can see them indicated here. I don't see the Korean satellite. Uh, of course, this is the sun on this side, the light side, and the dark side's over here. So we still have all this energy bleeding in from the back side. And it's primary, primarily electron energy, which from what I've learned over the past seven years covering this Nemesis Nibiru thing, that uh, our binary twin sun, the uh, Nemesis, as it's called, along with its uh, mini solar system, Nibiru being one of the planets, uh, primarily emits mostly electrons because our sun primarily emits mostly protons so that would just stand to reason binary twin equal opposite uh, Newton's law so that's like sort of a balance counterbalance thing so anyway I wanted to show you that and uh, once again there's the IMF is the blue these are interplanetary magnetic field lines. Uh, you can see we only have nine planets, but look at all these different field lines, and they're all getting jumbled up <clears throat> majorly. So, where are all these uh, other field lines coming from? Now, I would uh, put forth that. Uh, it's uh, field lines connecting to the Nemesis Sun from our planets, along with uh, its planets connecting to the field lines from our Sun. And uh, you can see there's a whole bunch of them behind the Earth, more so than they're out in front of the Earth. Of course, we can't see that much further than here. However, it's, it would appear that most of them are all behind the Earth which is apparently where this nemesis system's at somewhere behind the earth <clears throat> we get all this electrons bleeding in and you can see here from the uh, z cut solar wind velocity this shows you the uh, solar wind coming from here so all the arrows should always be going right right to left and as you can see, they get twisted around oftentimes. And this has been going on for several years now, actually. This is like a big plasma building up discharge. You can see it here. Big plasma build up the blue. And I, I would submit it's also the uh, black as well. I, I think this is high energy here. This is electron energy. That would be my assumption. I could be wrong. But as you can see, the bow shock is getting severely compressed at times. So our magnetosphere is definitely getting weaker. And it's I saw it go, look, it went all the way down almost to the geosynchronous orbit. And then it actually flipped back and forth there as well. So eh, it's not good stuff there, people. Here's something else I just recently noticed, maybe in the last couple of weeks, but it's really becoming more pronounced now. But I noticed that the showers, the precip, was all 
building up in uh, like spots all around here and there. You can see it here, but it's more evident if you click on the cloud feature. You can see like this resonant grid pattern all across the planet in the clouds. Spotty grid pattern. Now, I would submit that this is some kind of a resonant magnetic frequency affecting even our atmosphere now. And the reason why I say this is, check this out. If you remember my video act on 4.6, I uh, noticed the same grid you pattern appeared. Now check this out. You notice, you know that ever since the uh, SDS spacecraft that it's scheduled for on one of the space weather SDO shots, you'll see it here. It supposedly readjusted itself. They're getting some uh, some funky uh, static readings coming all around the sun. <clears throat> now, yesterday he just posted this vid. Very strange square grid surrounds our sun and the hologram. Now he's into the UFOs and all that kind of stuff. Which, uh, they probably do have some UFOs up there. We're not going to go there. Anyway, let me play this loop through a little bit for you. This was from you yesterday. see the grid pattern? SDOA1A. That was out in space. It's like a grid. It has to be magnetic resonant. Some type of magnetic All resonance. The sun. This is at the 335 uh, wavelength, I believe. Yeah, 335. See it there. So, the Mayan housing video, 74 video, showing you those grids. started thinking, hmm, that might be some kind of a magnetic grid pattern. So I went to YouTube, I tried it on Google. This has got some better results looking at looking in here. And there's definitely some grid patterns associated with magnetic fields. I'm no scientist, so perhaps someone uh, that knows what's going on there, like, uh, Okay, so you see what I'm talking about. We had that magnetic grid pattern show up on that uh, mine house and uh, YouTube channel vid back on April 5th and on an STO shot of the sun. And now it's becoming quite pronounced here on the earth as well, reflected in these funky cloud patterns. Now, I mean, we got some weird, weird stuff going on. And if you notice some of these winds, look at the configuration of these wind patterns. It's quite angular. That's, that's directly, as a direct result of the... Uh, Magnetic connections, I believe, field line connections with this nemesis system that are that are driving these winds. The reason I say that is because of these low pressure systems, for instance. Now this is all southern hemisphere stuff. See we got a lot of lows going on down here. That's a serious low there. 963. There's the uh table there. Look at this one. Holy smokes, 941. So it's almost off the charts down here. But here, check this out now. Normally lows are associated with uh,
Okay, the reason I say that is because if you'll notice here, I punched up the thunderstorms on this Venture Sky weather program, and this measures the uh, potential energy in the atmosphere. And on these serious lows, you see there's no potential energy or virtually no potential energy. So with the absence of uh, difference in potential energies, I mean, nothing else can be driving these lows other than some kind of a magnetic field disturbance. So you see what I'm saying? So this basically measures thunderstorm potential or instability within the atmosphere. So we get these huge low pressure systems and we got almost a zero atmosphere or zero mostly especially over all, all this area now if you go up in here this is where you can see we have some potential energy now this is something I really found to be interesting check this out now see the difference we got 2900 kilograms joules per kilogram potential energy in the atmosphere 31 there but then if you just go across this straight line see how much it drops by at least a thousand or more a lot more and you can see this straight line pattern now i've noticed this way back in uh last summer when I was tracking all those different Atlantic hurricanes coming from over here so obviously the government has some kind of a frequency uh, emission thing set up out here somewhere or it could be back here and then it's just spreading out probably back here if you extrapolate it's probably coming from Puerto Rico but anyway the United States and a good part of Mexico has been uh, being constantly hit with this frequency. So you see what I'm talking about? Which elevates the Cape Index, heats up the atmosphere in other words, and so the potential for storms is much greater. Um, I'm running out of time here, so hang on. So here's a tip. Now I pulled up the Goes East image viewer and I have it on the water vapor on the lower altitude range. Usually on the I'll put you on the full disk view. Usually on the weather channel or I AccuWeather, they'll show you the water vapor imagery. This is at the mid-level range. So you can see it here. And this you can only see this half of the world on this goes east thing you can see the water vapor this is the dry air now wherever the dry air is the Cape index is super low and you can check that out for yourself if you go on a venture sky okay so you can see I got you back on venture sky on the thunderstorm Cape index you can see we got zeros all around through here now we flip back over to this and you'll see that we'll put it on the low because that shows the most dry air you can see where the dry air is there's your low cape index so like I told you about the um, nemesis thing emitting mostly electrons that's where our energy has been uh, our atmosphere has been super energized I showed you that with the Falk radiation belts and uh, what this dry air does, you pour out some vinegar, which the acidic acid and the vinegar reacts with the alkaline salts based chemtrails clouds, and it uh, basically erases them chemically. And when, when, it, when that chemical reaction occurs, it also uh, removes potential energy from the atmosphere, so you're going to limit the lightning strikes as well. 
So I'm running out of time here, but that's uh, that's how it works. Put out the vinegar. You're going to kill your thunderstorms. You're going to kill your clouds. You're going to kill your lightning. You're going to kill everything. All right. Peace out. Love you, Lord. Amen and amen.